Unit 14, Behind the Scenes. Page 92, Exercise 2, Conversation. Movies are hard work. Part A, Listen and Practice. Working on movies must be really exciting. Oh, yeah, but it's also very hard work. A one-minute scene in a film can take days to shoot. Really? Why is that? Well, a scene isn't filmed just once. Lots of different shots have to be taken. Only the best ones are used in the final film. So how many times does a typical scene need to be shot? It depends, but sometimes as many as 20 times. One scene may be shot from five or six different angles. Wow, I didn't realize that. Why don't you come visit the studio? I can show you how things are done. Great, I'd love to. Page 92, Exercise 2, Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What else makes working on movies difficult? So, you see, it's not really as glamorous a job as people think. I guess not. For example, the hours are dreadful. So it's not exactly a 9-to-5 job? Not at all. Sometimes we shoot a scene right through the night. Or we may start work early in the morning. We have to get everything ready for a shoot, the lighting and everything, and that can take hours. So if we're going to start filming at 8 in the morning, we usually have to be on the job by 3 or 4 a.m. to get ready. 3 in the morning? That's unbelievable. Oh, no, it's not. Believe me, it happens all the time. Page 93, Exercise 3, Grammar Focus. The passive to describe process. Is are plus past participle. A scene isn't filmed just once. Only the best shots are used. Modal plus B plus past participle. One scene may be shot from five or six different angles. Lots of different shots have to be taken. Page 93, Exercise 4, Listening. I love my job. Part A. Listen to an interview with a TV producer. Write down three things a producer does. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Scenes, the show that profiles fascinating jobs and the people that do them. I'm Rita Roberts. Our guest today is Scott Jasper, a local TV producer. Hello, Scott. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for inviting me, Rita. Let me begin by saying that I asked a few people what they thought a producer does, and I was surprised at all the different responses I got. Uh, yeah, you're so right. When I tell people I'm a producer, I often get a slightly confused reaction, sort of like, oh, really? Well, let's clear up the mystery. I'd love to. First off, let me say that not every producer does exactly the same things. But I can say that they are all tired and stressed out, but probably love their job. For myself, I can tell you that my job allows me to be in charge of things and at the same time, work as part of a team. There's a lot of responsibility to this job, too. I have to see that everything is done correctly, on time, and within the budget. Most people probably think of the producer as the money person. Is there a creative side to the job, too? Oh, absolutely. For example, I do research and think up ideas for shows with the writers. And then I work with the directors and the performers. You have to have a strong personality to be a producer. You have to be in charge of everyone, get them to do what you want, but you still have to be nice to them. That can't be easy. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Also, you have to be able to make quick decisions. And if something you thought was great isn't working, you can't waste time. You have to let it go and start again. 
This isn't the job for someone who is indecisive or hates being under pressure. I love the excitement and the opportunity to work with very interesting people. Well, this has been very informative, Scott, but I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Speaking for Behind the Scenes, I'm Rita Roberts. Page 93, Exercise 4, Part B. Listen again. What are three personality traits a producer should have? Complete the chart. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Scenes, the show that profiles fascinating jobs and the people that do them. I'm Rita Roberts. Our guest today is Scott Jasper, a local TV producer. Hello, Scott. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for inviting me, Rita. Let me begin by saying that I asked a few people what they thought a producer does, and I was surprised at all the different responses I got. Uh, yeah, you're so right. When I tell people I'm a producer, I often get a slightly confused reaction, sort of like, oh, really? Well, let's clear up the mystery. I'd love to. First off, let me say that not every producer does exactly the same things. But I can say that they are all tired and stressed out, but probably love their job. For myself, I can tell you that my job allows me to be in charge of things and at the same time, work as part of a team. There's a lot of responsibility to this job, too. I have to see that everything is done correctly, on time, and within the budget. Most people probably think of the producer as the money person. Is there a creative side to the job, too? Oh, absolutely. For example, I do research and think up ideas for shows with the writers. And then I work with the directors and the performers. You have to have a strong personality to be a producer. You have to be in charge of everyone, get them to do what you want, but you still have to be nice to them. That can't be easy. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Also, you have to be able to make quick decisions. And if something you thought was great isn't working, you can't waste time. You have to let it go and start again. This isn't the job for someone who is indecisive or hates being under pressure. I love the excitement and the opportunity to work with very interesting people. Well, this has been very informative, Scott, but I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Speaking for Behind the Scenes, I'm Rita Roberts. Page 95, Exercise 8, Perspectives. Quiz Show. Part A. Listen to a quiz show. Can you guess the occupations? Casting Director. Location Scout. Screenwriter. Dialect Coach. Prop Designer. Script Doctor. One, a blank who finds appropriate places to shoot scenes gets to travel all over the world. Two, a blank is someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie. Three, a blank who makes sure that everything on a movie set looks realistic creates the objects that the characters use. 4. A blank is someone who develops and expands a story idea into a full movie script. 5. A blank is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. 6. A blank 
who is used when an original screenplay needs more work, makes jokes funnier, and dialogues more realistic. Page 95, Exercise 9, Pronunciation Review of Stress in Compound Nouns Part A. Listen and Practice Notice how the first word in a compound noun usually receives greater stress. Newscaster Photo Editor Movie Extra Sitcom Writer Stunt Person Page 96, Exercise 10, Grammar Focus. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist that works with actors on their accents. Non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. Units 13 to 14, Progress Check. Page 98, Exercise 1, Listening. Where did it take place? Part A. Listen to three conversations. Where do you think each conversation takes place? What do you think might have happened? Take notes. 1. Well, I'll certainly never eat here again. And I'll tell all my friends not to come here either. I do apologize. I, I'm afraid he's just started working here, but I don't think he's going to last long. Not after this. Two. Help! Help! Would someone call the manager? Can anyone hear me? Help! Oh, is someone in there? Yes! I'm stuck between the second and third floors! Please help me get out! Won't it open? No! Get the manager, please! Okay, I'll get some help. Uh, don't go away! Three. Oh no, not again. Listen to that funny noise. I thought you just had it checked. Well, I did. The mechanic said everything was okay now. Good grief. Well, let's stop and check the manual again. Maybe we can fix it ourselves. Let's have a look under the hood and see what we can do.